everybody. My name is Shannon Valatin, and this is my daughter Landry. And um, I work for Teacher Created Materials. I um, love working for Teacher Created Materials because I get to work with students. I get to work with teachers. My job is an educational sales consultant. So I get to go out into schools and I get to visit with all of your teachers, all of your principals and district personnel in making sure that we create a world in which children love to learn with our resources. One of the things I love that um, since I get to read this book to you today, Your World Bubblegum Addition and Subtraction, is I get to give goodies to all of those teachers and principals and district administrators. And so one of the things that I always give is I always actually give bubblegum. You can see this box right here. This is a box of bazooka bubblegum. And I always tell them that they're going to go bazooka over the resources that I have for you students. The other thing that I want you to know a little bit about me is that math is something that I really, really enjoy. And one of the reasons is, is that my dad, he was a math professor at the college level for 40 plus years before he retired. And so math was always something that he made sure that I knew was all around me. And it was something fun and it was something to think of as a game and I was gonna be able to solve this puzzle. And it's not something that we should be afraid of. And so one of the things I'm excited for you today is to be able to see that math is all around you and that math will be fun. And we're going to do it today when we talk about bubblegum. Um, so let's get started. The book that I have for you today is Your World Addition and Subtraction, Bubblegum. And we are going to learn all about bubblegum. And obviously we're gonna blow some bubbles as you saw my daughter do earlier, and we're gonna do it through the lens of math. So let's get started. In this reader, this is from one of our math reader series, is um, the table of contents. And in the table of contents, we're going to learn a lot of things. Um, where our different chapters might begin, as well as where we might have our glossary and our index and even our answer key. But don't peek before you try. So let me show you around this book before we actually start reading. I want to start at the back of the book so that we can kind of get started um, learning before we go back and read the book. Right here at the back of the book, we have the glossary. And for those of you who know what a glossary is, that's where we're going to have terms that we are going to see throughout the reading that we might not quite understand. And so we're going to really highlight those. And so these words are banned. And banned is when we order people to stop using or doing something. So we're gonna see that in our reading today. Batch, a group of things that are made at the same time. Benefits, good results or effects. Dyes, D-Y-E-S. Those are things that change the colors of other things. Metro, an underground railway system, and some of you may have been on one of those before. Recipes, how many of you have been making a lot of recipes over this holiday season? Those are sets of instructions for making things. And here's a word you might not quite know, it's sap. A watery fluid that comes from inside a plant. A lot of times, lately, I see them all over my car. Sap, which drips from the trees and it gets on your car. It's hard to come off, but we're going to learn about it through the lens of bubblegum. We're also going to see our index here. And our index is going to be if I have a thought or something I really want to know about, I can come back to the index and see where I might actually find that page. So it's a little different than a table of contents because I can actually look up something very specific. Here's the answer key that I told you about. And these are going to be those answers to um, a really fun section throughout the book that you're going to see about four times in this reader, Let's Explore Math. And then at the end, we have our problem solving. And problem solving is going to be where you're going to be able to summarize what you've learned um, during the reading, and you're going to be able to answer some really important questions. And then finally, at the very end of the book is our math talk. And um, those are some more thought-provoking questions that you can think about and use all the expertise that you learned while reading the book. And we'll get back to this a little later. So let's start over at the beginning. All right, so bubble gum, addition and subtraction. 
pop. Chomp, chomp, pop. Chewing gum has been around for thousands of years, but bubble gum has a more recent history. Many people think bubble gum and chewing gum are the same thing. In fact, they are quite different. Chewing gum is made with the sap from the trees. The sap makes the gum very chewy. Bubble gum is stretchy, which lets people blow bubbles. Some people chew it because they like the taste. Some people think it just makes a mess. Regardless of whether you are a fan, one thing is certain, bubble gum has come a long way over the years. I've got some bubble gum right here, the bazooka, but I've also got some chewing gum and we'll learn a little bit about that in just a few minutes. Right here, you'll see this gentleman, he's up in the tree and he's using his tool to extract all the sap from the tree. Walter's Wonder. In the early 1900s, chewing gum was sold in most stores. Many people liked that treat, but gum was sticky, very sticky. It stuck to people's hands and clothes. It even stuck to their lips. Workers at the Fleer Corporation were trying to find a way to make a great piece of gum. A man named Walter Deemer worked in the office there. He was not an inventor, but Walter still wanted to help. He worked for more than a year on new gum recipes. One day, he made the perfect batch. See our words right there in bold? Those were the ones we saw in the glossary. The gum was not too sticky and it could stretch more than the old gum. So here we see a worker feeding the stretched bubble gum through a machine to flatten it. Bubble blowers. Gilbert Mustin was in charge of the Fleer Corporation. He called the new gum double bubble. Before that, no one had ever blown a bubble with gum. This was a new idea. In fact, Walter had to teach salespeople how to blow bubbles so they could sell the gum. I think that would be a fabulous job. People loved double bubble. It was not sticky like the other gum, and now they could blow huge bubbles. Other companies copied Walter's gum recipe. Within a few years, there were many brands of gum from which to choose. And here we can see a girl blowing a giant bubble in 1959. How many of you have been able to start off small like this? This is about as far as I can go, that small size, but all the way to that big bubble and then, oh no, it's all over her face. Here's the section I was talking to you about, let's explore math. Here's where we're gonna take some of what we've already learned in the previous pages and we're gonna put it to use. We're gonna solve some puzzles. The Fleer Corporation grew very fast because of double bubble. Walter had to teach more and more salespeople how to blow bubbles. Suppose that the 10 frames show how many people. Walter taught on Monday and Tuesday. So here we have the 10 frames and here are some questions for you to think about. You could talk it over with your parents, your siblings, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, your teachers. Have fun with it. First question is how many people did Walter teach each day? On which day did Walter teach the most people? How many people did Walter teach all together? And finally, how many more people did Walter teach on Monday than Tuesday? I want you to take some time after we read to um, answer these questions and um, show that knowledge off to your family and friends. Here's a box of double bubble and in the double bubble gum, it always comes with cartoons. So very exciting and fun when we look through the gum. Why pink? Today, most pieces of bubble gum are pink. We owe that to Walter too. When he made his final batch of gum, he looked for a way to make it stand out. Walter grabbed a bottle of food coloring, which is the liquid that dyes things certain colors. The only bottle he could find was pink. Walter did not mind. His favorite color was pink. Mine too. When other companies made their gum, they used pink too. Here you're going to see two workers check their gum recipe. This is all the way back in 1935. And here's a factory worker mixing the food coloring, which is called dye, into a batch of bubble gum in 1947. Love it or hate it. Good gum used to be hard to find, but now it's sold in most countries. People love to chomp on this chewy treat. A typical American chews about a pound of gum each year. That may seem like a lot, but around the world, more than 100,000 tons of gum are chewed each year. 
all that gum weighs about as much as 20,000 elephants. Wow, that's a lot of gum. Here's another let's explore math. Imagine you work at a candy store. Wouldn't that be so fun? You keep track of how much chewing gum you sell. The first question I want you to think about after we finish reading is in one week, you sell four packs of gum each day for four days. How many packs of gum do you sell? Explain your strategy for finding the solution using words, numbers, or pictures. And the second question is, the next week, your goal is to sell 20 packs of gum. How many more packs is this than the first week? I know you can do it. Here's a picture of kids pushing in line to buy bubble gum in 1947. How many of you like to buy bubble gum? I know I do. Not everyone is a fan of bubble gum. In 1987, a new metro system was built in Singapore. Gum chewers left bits of gum on the seats and on the doors of the trains. This made the country's leaders very mad. So they wrote a law that banned the sale of gum. Today, only gum that is used to keep the teeth clean can be sold there, but buyers must sign their names and show identification cards first. We're very lucky that we can buy gum and chew it as we please, but make sure you always ask permission from your parents or your teachers or wherever you are chewing gum and never ever throw it on the floor. Make sure you always put it into a piece of paper and throw it in the garbage. Let's explore math again. Some people spit gum on the ground or stick it under tables when they are done chewing. It costs about three cents to make a stick of gum, but 10 cents to clean it up. First question, how much more does it cost to clean up one piece of gum than it does to make one stick of gum? And the second question, which costs more, cleaning up two pieces of gum or making six sticks of gum? And by how much? Now remember, do not spit your gum. Bubble gum fun. Love it or hate it, bubble gum is here to stay. Many people try to see who can blow the biggest bubble. Bubble gum contests are held each year at state fairs and schools. The world record was set in 2004. It was 20 inches, which is 51 centimeters wide. Many people have tried to beat the record, but so far, no one has. Here we see a picture of a man measuring a girl's bubble in the contest. And here we see a group of people trying to blow the biggest bubble. And as you saw at the beginning, my daughter, she blew a pretty good bubble. Here, let's explore math again. Lucky likes to compete in bubble blowing contests. He is practicing for a big contest next weekend. Number one, imagine that Lucky blows four bubbles. His bubbles are three inches, six inches, five inches, and two inches wide. What is the total of the widths of Lucky's bubbles? And the second question, yesterday, Lucky blew a bubble that was 18 inches wide. Today, Lucky blows a bubble that is 10 inches smaller than the one he blew yesterday. How wide is the bubble he blows today? Now remember, make sure to come back and do these Let's Explore Maths after we finish reading. Bubble gum can be fun, but it can also help you in ways that you may not realize. Have you ever been hungry, but have to wait for lunchtime? I know I have. Try chewing a piece of gum. Chewing gum will trick your brain into thinking that you have food. It may even stop your stomach from growling until you can eat. Do you have a test coming up? Some schools have been known to let kids chew gum during important tests. Chewing gum has been shown to help people focus. Here's a boy who wishes lunchtime could be a lot sooner. And here you see some kids taking some tests just like you might have to. But remember, don't chew gum in class or at school unless you've gotten permission. Chewing gum can help in more ways than you think. It may stop you from crying when you cut an onion. Some people think it works because the gum flavor is stronger than the onion flavor. Other people think that it makes you breathe through your mouth, not your nose. Still, other people think that it is all in your head. If you think it will stop you from crying, then you will. I know I'm gonna try this the next time I cut onions. 
Chewing sugar-free gum after meals might also keep your teeth strong. Gum causes your mouth to make more saliva or spit. This clears out any food that is caught between your teeth and it also keeps your breath fresh. Here in this picture, you see a dentist showing her patient the x-rays of his teeth. He's probably chewed a lot of gum to make sure that they have, um, are nice and clean. Chewing gum can have many benefits, but can also cause some problems. Picture yourself blowing a huge bubble. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, the bubble pops. There's gum everywhere. It's even in your hair. What can you do? There's one safe way to get the gum out of your hair, but it can be a little messy. Rub peanut butter on the gum, then wait a few minutes. The oils in the peanut butter will help the sticky gum come right out. How many of you have ever done this and gotten gum in your hair? I can say I have, and I have three daughters who have very long hair, and I can say each one of them have two. I'm gonna use the peanut butter trick next time. Luckily, gum does come out of hair, but what if you get bubble gum on your clothes? Getting gum out of clothes can be tricky, but it can be done. Fold your clothes, put them in a plastic bag, and put the bag in the freezer. After a few hours, you should be able to scrape the gum right off. If you are in a hurry, do not have time to wait, rub an ice cube over the gum. Here you're gonna see someone got gum on their jeans. It's nice and sticky. They folded up the pair of jeans, they put it in the plastic bag, and now they're putting it in the freezer. And that gum's gonna get frozen and it's gonna be a lot easier to get off. A blast with bubble gum. Once you clean up the mess, there are many ways to enjoy bubble gum. You can chew it, you can pop it, you can blow it. Maybe you wanna set a world record. Maybe you wanna get rid of a bad taste in your mouth, or you might just chew gum for fun. No matter what you do, how you feel, or where you go, bubble gum is there to pop along with you. And here we see these silly children um, blew the bubble and it got all over their nose and they're trying to get it off. All right, we've arrived at the point of the book where we're going to do some problem solving. I know that you've learned a lot about math and you learned it through talking about bubble gum. Who knew we could do that? That's why math is all around us. It's in our real world every day. Right now, as I'm sitting here reading this book to you, I can see lots of math around me. Our problem solving is about you being able to summarize what you've learned, taking what you learned, and you're going to be able to um, really provide thoughtful answers based on what you learn. Let's get started. Bubble blowing is not the only contest for gum lovers. The chomp title goes to the person who chews the most pieces of bubble gum for the longest amount of time. The current chomp title champ is Richard Walker. He chewed 135 pieces of bubble gum for eight hours. Wow, that makes my jaws hurt. Imagine that Alexis is competing in a contest at her school. She wants to hold the chomp title. There are three rounds. In her first round, she chooses, she chews 10 pieces of gum for four hours. In the next round, she chews six pieces of gum for four hours. In her third round, she chews four pieces of gum for four hours. Answer the questions to summarize her chewing activity. So here's some questions to think about Alexis and Richard Walker. How many more pieces of gum does Alexis chew in round one than in round two? How many fewer pieces of gum does Alexis chew in round three than in round two? In which round does she chew the most pieces of gum and how do you know? Number four, how many total pieces of gum does Alexis chew in all three rounds? Explain your strategy using words, numbers, or pictures. And the last question, for how many total hours does Alexis chew gum? And how many more hours, more or less, than Richard is this? I know you can do it. Put your mind to work. Go back and use all of the text that we just read and you'll be able to find the answers. If you get into a little trouble, remember, we do provide you with the answer key at the back of the book, but don't peek until you've tried. 
Again, here's our glossary. Here's our index, the answer key, of course, and some more additional math talk. Let's go ahead and read these problems because I know now you love talking about math. We've had a lot of fun reading. I used to be a teacher in the classroom as well before I started working for teacher created materials. And I always wanted my students to know how fun and exciting math was. And I can tell you that they ended up loving it. And so I want you to love it as well. Here's some math talk questions. How do you know whether to add or subtract in a word problem? How can you use addition to help you solve subtraction problems? How can you use number lines to show addition and subtraction? Frank likes blowing bubbles. In five days, he blows 17 bubbles. How many bubbles might he have blown each day? Why do you think so? Elizabeth wants to add eight and nine. She says, if I start with eight, I can count up nine numbers and land on my answer. Will Elizabeth's strategy work? Or is there a more efficient strategy? Aisha has some bubble gum. She has more than Andre. She has three fewer pieces than Kendall. If Kendall has 10 pieces of bubble gum, how many pieces does Aisha have? How many pieces might Andre have? And why do you think so? What I love about math is that sometimes we can just talk it out. Sometimes it doesn't even involve writing down numbers. It talks about the way we might think. And we can talk about that just like you do in your reading. So I wanna say thank you for allowing me to read to you today. We're gonna to go back to the beginning just so I can show you the cover of this amazing book. Your World, Bubblegum, Addition and Subtraction. I thank you for letting me read to you today. I hope you enjoyed it and learning math through the lens of bubblegum and knowing that math is all around us and it can be fun. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye everyone.